Father, we pray now and ask that your Holy Spirit would just make this a really encouraging time for our spirits as we gather together and we look to your scripture, Lord, that you would give us the instructions we need. In this uh, passage, Lord, that has helped carry me through many, many decisions and many, many trials and things that I face, Lord, I just pray I could share these words in a way that would help the ones that hear it to also be strengthened by this truth in your word. Just give us all ears to hear what your spirit wants to speak to us now. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. Guys, we're going to look at Romans chapter 14. And I'm going to do a study that I've done uh, a few times. It's actually something I learned in Bible school. I went to a Bible school, well, this will date me, in 1979 and 80 I went to uh, Calvary Chapel had a Bible school in Twin Peaks California and one of the classes I had was the book of Romans a fellow named T Thornton was our teacher and he taught verse by verse through the book of Romans and we had just got to this verse in uh, in Romans chapter 14 um, verse 27 it says that the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink it's um righteousness peace and what's the last thing joy in the Holy Ghost these are the things what are the um, really what the kingdom of heaven is about it's not about a bunch of rules you know what we eat what we drink how we dress you know uh, some some Christian circles make it all about these rules and the scripture doesn't the scripture says the kingdom of heaven is really about these three things righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost so these are the three gauges, I call it, that help me to decide what I should do in my life. Like, first of all, righteousness. Well, we'll just break it down. Righteousness is to do what is right in whose sight? In the Lord's sight. Not in, don't go by righteousness of men, by the way. That would be the wrong gauge to use. Because the Bible says that men's hearts are desperately wicked. Um, you know, we're constantly given to doing evil. And so that's not really the right gauge to use. You would have to use righteousness as in what is right in the sight of the Lord. What does the Lord say is right in his sight? Now, it's funny because a lot of people will tell me, well, I know what I'm doing probably isn't right with God. And they don't even go to church. And they just say that, just out of the blue. And the reason that they say that is because the Scripture tells us the Holy Ghost convicts the world concerning sin. God does the job we don't even have to tell people hey you're doing something wrong because the holy spirit is on the job and he lets them know already inside they'll even say things like people that that don't follow the lord will say you know inside i had this feeling like what i wasn't doing like i shouldn't be doing this and when they ask me how do you why do you think there's really a god i said because how many of you had that feeling by the way where you where you just thought man I, I some something inside is saying this is a bad move or don't do this now people will call me as the pastor and they'll say hey pastor I have a question for you you know I I, I had this feeling like I shouldn't do this thing and but I went ahead and did it anyway and now what do I do because I feel really bad because this is what happened and then some bad thing happened and I'm thinking uh, next time you should listen first off before you have the bad thing happen the reason God had that um, little feeling inside telling you that this isn't right is because he guides us with these three gauges. What righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. These three things is really what his kingdom's about. So if someone comes to me and says, Pastor, I have a question. Um, this one in particular, I'm going to show you how I learned this. At Bible school, we were, we were in our younger days, so a lot of young men and women seeking the Lord and of course, the topic comes up of how do I know who the right person is to marry? You know, and, and we're learning about the Lord and we're all excited. And, and we get to this passage and we're learning to use these things as, as rules of thumb for guiding our lives. And one of the guys comes and says, well, you know, um, how do I know which person I'm supposed to marry? 
you know we're at bible school there's these two christian sisters that i i hung out with both of them we have study group together and like how do you know which one to will be your wife and i said well you know first of all he said and i know the bible teaches don't be unequally yoked so you can't put a believer with an unbeliever so um but they're both christians and i'm a christian so like isn't that all right with god you know either one of the girls and this fellow was asking me my advice how do i know and i'm like man we just studied remember i tell you guys i'm only one day ahead of the people god puts me around i literally just learned this in class the day before and he says well i like that sister she's very nice and she's very nice but how would i know which one to like pursue for courtship and dating and you know like to potential be to be my wife and, I, and she says well they're both you know he, he's telling me they're both christians and i'm a christian so is that okay with the lord i'm like yeah that's that's right in god's sight but um there's two more gauges we just learned it and so i'm telling him remember the other gauges is uh righteousness what's the second ga gauge to use peace and what's the third one joy so he says i said well let me ask you if if you and by the way you need to do all three of these gauges in the order they're presented okay so if you are asking me about anything in your life you're wondering is it okay for me to do this or me to pursue this or i want you to use all three of these gauges but let me explain it in a simple way. If gauge number one says don't do it, you don't need to go to gauge two or gauge three because you already got your answer. Gauge two and gauge three are only there if you pass gauge one. Okay, Don't even go on to gauge two because some people will say, well, I know it's not right, but I have peace about doing it. Well, then your peace is not from God Okay, because he's not going to give you peace to do something that's unrighteous. That's your flesh talking. Okay, But when it comes to the things of the Spirit, and you go, so he asked me, I have peace about either girl. I mean, I, I feel it's right with either girl. I said, I said, well, how about peace? Do you have more peace with the idea of being with one of them or the other one? Has the Spirit spoken to you in that, in that part of that gauge? What's it read? And he goes, well, kind of I have peace equally about either girl. And I said, well, good thing there's a third gauge. And this is the words the Lord gave me back then. I said, good thing there's a third gauge that says there's joy as one of the things in the Holy Ghost. Joy. Which one do you have more joy about the idea of being spending the rest of your life with? Do you have more joy? Just p picture in your mind which one gives you more joy. Read the gauge. Being with this one or being with that one. And all of a sudden, his eyes just opened up and he went, ah. Oh, I, got, I never thought of that like because he was trying to figure out is this is this right with God is it okay with God is it you know and he even had peace about that it would be okay peace wise with the other girl but that's where his confusion lied he was like what about like how, what if they're both equal and I said yeah but there's a third gauge and that third gauge wound up making him marry the girl from Bible school that they're still married to this day serving the Lord. But it was because this simple truth in the word was just, it's not a bunch of rules. What, what you know, I eat, what I drink, what I put on, all the things that some churches make a bunch of rules about God's kingdom that it's not about. It's, it's about this inside part of our walk. It's the, the things that are right, righteousness, me doing what's right in his sight, me having peace. When you have peace in the Holy Ghost, is that a good thing? Yeah, we need His peace. And the third thing is really important and often overlooked. The joy that's in the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my what? My strength. And if you don't pay attention to that third gauge, say you are only one of those people that's like, well, I want to know what's right and what's not right, period. And you don't pursue God to know about the things that are peaceable from the Lord, the things of the Holy Ghost that give you true peace, or the things of, of, of the Spirit that bring us into fullness of joy. You know, when you meet Christians that don't have joy, any of you met any of those Christians? Mm -hmm. You're like, what's your problem? I don't have a problem. I'm a Christian, man. I'm doing the right thing. I'm like, yeah, except you're a crank. You know, you have no joy. And you want people to sign, yeah, they should get in and 
be part of the group. What's wrong with them? I'm like, uh, you're what's wrong. I don't want to be around you. You freak them out. You know, there's no, like, why would I want to join a group where the, the people have no joy? And if they have no joy, I tell you from years of pastoring, they will not have any strength in the Lord. Because they, truly, it's the joy of the Lord that gives me that inner strength to handle whatever trials, whatever circumstance, whatever situations. It happens because I have the joy of the Lord to power me. So when you face something and you, you got a big decision, and I want you guys, especially for you guys of college career age, pay attention to this. This one might save your bacon on who you wind up spending the rest of your days with on this earth. Okay, when you pick the person to be married to, make sure that in your spirit, you know, in the Holy Ghost, it says, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, you know inside, yeah, I know that this is the right thing to do. In my, because how many people do you know got hooked up with the wrong person? Because they didn't go by these gauges, they went by the flesh. They went, oh, I'm attracted, they're attractive, and, and therefore it must be right. And you talk to him, and you're like, "Do you feel like this is right, Lord? Uh, who cares? It's right. My flesh says it's right. You know, you can. I can always spot the young men in lust, not in love, in lust. They're like, "Yeah, it's right, man. She's hot." And I'm like, "That's not the righteousness, peace, and joy I'm talking about. When it's the right person that God has brought into your life, and He gives you that inner, you know, inside, this is right, and." Then he just causes his spirit to bring a peace, a peace the Bible says is not of this world. It's um, not based on circumstance. It's the peace of the Lord. Yeah, it passes all human comprehension. You just know I got peace about this. But lastly, use that third gauge. Now, if the question you, you, you're, you're trying to discern, these three gauges will work for any arena. They'll work for, you know, couples going, well, we were praying about buying a house and we went and looked at this neighborhood and we went over to that neighborhood and, you know, we're qualified for, for the loan for either one. And, you know, sometimes I've seen couples that will use this wisdom be directed to the right place that God wants to put them, that they could be a light in that, that neighborhood just because they paid attention, not just to, yeah, okay, it's right. We have enough money. We can buy either house. Let's just go walk in and pick it. But they actually prayed and said, Lord, show me. Let me use these things of your Holy Spirit available to me. Let, let me go in the house and say, Lord, do, do I have more peace being here? Do I have joy about being here? And when they do that and they get their answer, they come back going, Pastor, I'm so glad you shared that. I'm thinking, I didn't make it up. It's right here in Romans. I just share it with you to point, put a little spotlight on this. Use these three gauges in any question anything you have that you're trying to make a life decision say lord is this right with you is do i have peace your peace and do i have your joy in doing it and if you get to all the way through all three great gauges and you got green lights on all of them there that's what the kingdom of heaven is truly about is those three things so that's the three gauges study okay i want you guys to now you've heard this before right some of you how, how many of you have used this I want to encourage you. This is a this is one that will spiritually save your bacon, so to speak. It it can really keep you out of a lot of trouble when you use it. The people who come to me and say, "Well, I knew I didn't have peace about it." Anyone here ever had that happen? I didn't have peace about it. Yeah. But they, you know, uh, but it's all right to go to Denny's after, you know, fellowship. But I really didn't have peace that night. I didn't know why. And then. That's the night that the someone backed into their car and you know in the parking lot while they were in having a, a hamburger and they for some reason they didn't have peace about going but they went anyway. Do you know how many Christians can be, avoid some of the trials that they go through just if they would listen to that that little the Bible says the Holy Ghost doesn't scream at us it says he's a still small voice it just speaks hey and you know it. You know it better than anyone because you're the one who hears it. But do you have to obey it? No. And I want to encourage you. These gauges are there so that you can have a full experience in the Lord. So you can enjoy your Christian walk. 
and the more you use them the more you pay attention to them the better your life goes you know and if you ignore them it's I, I call these the gauges like when I, I think of them as gauges on a car dashboard because I grew up in the era when we actually had gauges not idiot lights we had you know a oil pressure gauge a temperature gauge and we were taught to pay attention to these gauges if there was you know your oil temperature or your or your oil pressure dropped and your and your and your temperature of your engine was like pegging to the super high red zone you knew get to the side of the road before I blow up my car you know these were gauges we used to make sure that, that we were going to make it through our dr our drive our journey safely these are spiritual gauges to help you get through life's journey and so I, I want to encourage you highlight verse 20 uh, or verse 17 here and make it um, you know something that you revisit whenever you're trying to make a life decision and let the Lord just let this wisdom sink in you'll find it it will come in handy over and over in your Christian walk so that's the that's the word for of encouragement for tonight guys from the Caymans out to